Assalamualaikum and welcome to a new series in The Struggle Within on Ahlul Bayt TV. Uh, this is episode two in a series where we're going to be discussing spirituality and how to perfect ourselves in the t current day that we are living in. And inshallah, we're going to be looking at some very key questions that many people will ask themselves throughout their lives, even those who are practicing uh, believers, practicing Muslims, but they may not have actually found the answers to these questions. So inshallah, throughout this series, we're going to be looking at some of the uh, more core uh, questions that can help to strengthen the foundation of our spirituality. And my guest is Sayyid Hassan Sadar. Asalaamu Alaikum. Alaikum as um, So in this episode, um, we're going to be looking at how to establish the presence of a creator how to establish um, that there is God uh, or not. Um, of course, this is an ancient debate. <laughs> uh, it's not a new debate, actually. It goes back to ancient times. Um, so there were people who doubted uh, the existence of, um, of a deity that has created um, all of existence even a few thousand years ago. Um, and, and maybe these questions kind of change form, you know, in each different century. Um, how can one establish the existence of a creator? Of the creator, Ahsantum. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Thank you very much for the introduction and for the question. Uh, before we answer, uh, it's refreshing to know that, yes, the discussion, the debate about the existence of the creator started many, many hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago. Um, and people have used different methods, different ways to prove his existence. But it's refreshing to know that despite um, the, what I call them, the doubts, the misconceptions, mm. the questions asked about this one fundamental principle, the existence of God. Despite new ones coming with time, it's refreshing to know that most of those new questions or misconceptions have been answered before. Right. Um, but people, unfortunately, either don't read yeah. or they rephrase uh, the question. However, uh, in essence, according to a very brief um, outlook into this debate from someone who's not a highly qualified specialist like myself, someone who, you know, continued with his academic career, this profession, but I had interest about this, mm. so I studied it. Um, most of the questions and the doubts thrown out today in the 21st century have been answered many, many years ago, right. but it's people either don't read or they rephrase the doubts and the questions. One of the preferred methods is using rationality mm. or logic to answer this question. There's obviously more than one method. And I appreciate that some people may use um, um, methods like personal experiences. And I do understand that I'm not an expert in other religions, but people of different religions, other than the religion of Islam, do have this as a one method. Yeah personal experience, a personal connection. God has talked to me. God has appeared to me. Um, in Islam, there is no such thing. We don't have a personal experience to justify something. And on objective analysis, even before we discuss the Islamic approach, objectively, if there's a personal or subjective experience, it can be used maybe as a personal yeah subjective evidence, but you can't use it for other people. Another approach is scientific approach, scientific method. Now, I'm, I'm a physician, I'm a doctor, I use science every day, and the scientific methodology of proving the existence of, of God, the Creator, is there, beautifully stated, undoubted. 
the figures speak for themselves. However, I prefer to use something superior to science. I prefer to use the, uh, the method of rationality, rational thinking, logic, because it is superior to science mm -hmm. in several ways. Number one, science in its conclusions relies on logic. Yeah. So we're talking about, you know, the foundation of human thinking. Number two, science changes with time. Yeah. Logic and rationality does not. Number three, uh, logic, rationality, is a common language that everyone speaks. Everyone can understand, regardless of the level of education, regardless of the time that they've lived in, whether it's you know, 200 BC or 2018. It doesn't matter. If it's logic, it's universal, it transcends time, everyone can understand it, and it makes sense for everybody. And before I explain what, what the logic I'm talking about is, it's worth reminding ourselves of this fact that logic is universal because unfortunately some people have doubted that logic is universal and continue to do so. And uh, everyone is free to think in themselves, yeah. but for us, um, uh, logic is universal because if you doubt logic, then the thinking process stops. Simple as yeah. that. Um, and when I say, I kept saying logic, logic, maybe I should explain what logic is. Yeah. Logic, unfortunately, is, um, is, is a loose term. A lot of people use it to, to describe certain process of thinking. In its essence, logic is using very few principles, not many. You don't need to, you don't need to be a specialist in this to use it. Logic is using few, a handful, of principles, of statements that the human intellect, our brains, our minds, accept to be true. Yeah. And the first of them is causality. The principle of causality, the statement of causality, that for every effect, there must be a cause. For every effect, mm. there must be a cause. And that effect could be an event, an action, but it must have a cause. Um, and I, I, I have read and I have heard people doubting this very yeah. basic uh, statement or principle of causality. Um, there, there are certain schools of thought among Muslims, such as the Ash'ari school, um, which challenged this idea of causality. And I have read narrations in Usul al-Kafi where the Imams say that um, the theory of causality is one of the theories that the School of Ahl al-Bayt as ascribes to. Um, so this is so within you know the Muslim tradition itself, there have been some schools of thought that have indeed you know, and challenged this idea. Indeed, Ahl al-Bayt, as as we know them, as the, the the path towards the true Sunnah of the Prophet which is the path of perfection towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, are the only um, uh, path that's out there. And the closer you are to it, the closer you are to the truth. The mm. further away from it, then you, you may get some of the most basic principles wrong, mm. like ignoring um, the, one of the basic logical statements, that for every effect there's a cause. Mm. And for those who doubt it, who doubt this particular principle, then... You know they may, you know, they may struggle to explain the most obvious of phenomena, and like the the famous example that's given, that if you are walking down the street and you find a clock or a watch, pick it up, and then someone says to you, you know, it just happened. That clock, that watch, uh -huh. uh, no one made it. Obviously, uh, it's an event, it's an effect, it's an action that for a for a for a clock to come together with its design, pieces together, and so on. Uh, for such an effect, there has been no cause. It just happened on its own. Would you believe it? And there are obviously so many other applications uh, that people will never... And here I would like to share with the audience um, the, an observation that people, when it comes to the Creator, when it comes to God, 
they may come up with the most random of illogical statements, mm -hmm. like doubting, for example, causality. But when it comes to their daily lives, they will never abandon this principle. Um, when they are riding their cars, when they're switching on the engine, yeah. they will never, when it, when, if it, when it doesn't run, they don't think, well, that's it, there's no cause. Mm. No, such effect has a cause, so they come out of the car and they look for the cause. Yeah. When they hear a bang on the door, they come up to find out who's, you know, they get out yeah. to find out who has knocked. No human being would say, oh, it's just an effect. Yeah. It happened without a cause, it's just a bang on the door. No one was there, nothing was there. So let's be a bit more honest when it comes to the creator. Let's be a bit more authentic, let's be a bit more human that what we do in our lives, because we, we're accessing this inner logic in our statements, let's apply it. Let's apply it to the Creator. And causality, it's very simple. We know that our world, and this, I'm going to start applying this, the principle of causality to our world. We know that our world is changing. The events in, in 2018 are all related to the events in 2017, year 2000, yeah. and the previous century, and the previous millennium, and so on. You keep going back in time, and the world is changing. There are so many effects, and the causes, the multiple causes for all these effects, are the effects of the day before, the week before, the century before, the 1,000 years before. So essentially we are talking about a chain of events, chain of effects that has causes. Yeah. And we are tracking back these causes in time. Because for every effect there's a cause. Yeah. There are two possibilities. We either keep tracking this chain of events this chain of effects indefinitely or we must stop at the starting point of everything. The first possibility, they label it as indefinite regression because we are regressing in time, yeah. we're going backwards to try and find the first event, the first cause, the cause of all causes. Yeah. First possibility, indefinite regression. Philosophers, philosophers say that indefinite regression is false. You can't regress indefinitely in time. And here I would like to share with the viewers that such a basic principle, and I'll explain why not. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'll explain yeah. why, why it is, it's false. You can't keep progressing in time indefinitely. But I just want to share with, with the viewers that um, I was flicking through the book, The God Delusion. Oh, yeah. And within the first few pages, a writer that is, is, is given such a attention in the media, I read his comment on this indefinite regression, mm -hmm. and it made me, with all due respect, laugh. That someone as highly educated, apparently, someone who is willing to step out of biology, which is his specialty, to go and address this fundamental issue of the existence of God, mm. to write a book about it, to call it the God delusion, yet in the first few pages, he completely gets it wrong. Right. In fact, in fact, he did, it shows that he did not understand what indefinite regression is. Wow. And I will explain to you what indefinite regression is and why it is false and how he got it completely wrong. Why is indefinite regression of events backwards is false. But by false it means it, it cannot happen because the event at the end will never take place. So now we are in 2018. Mm -hmm. The world is a sequence of events that we're regressing backwards. Now, let's use an example. Um, example of person number one 
walking through the door. Yeah. And him walking through the door, you know, through the door needs someone to push him from behind him. So his event is the event or the effect depends on a preceding event, like our world. Yeah. Going through the door, 2018. That's person number two. Person number three is behind them, person number four, number five, number ten. Now, if there is a limited number of people, ten or ten million, if the person number one million pushes the, the person in front of them, eventually the person at the door would get the push, would walk through the door. Yeah. If they are domino pieces, if you have ten pieces or 10 million pieces, the piece number 10 million, if it's pushed, it will eventually push the last piece. Mm. The question to the viewers, we are regressing in time, we're trying to chase them, chase backwards. Yeah. If there is an indefinite number of domino pieces, will the first piece fall? If there's an indefinite number of pieces, mm -hmm. If there is 10 million, 10 billion, no matter how big the number is, as long as it's a limited number, all you need is the, is the last one to be pushed and eventually it will push. But if there is an indefinite number of pieces, the first piece will never fall. Uh -huh. Because at each step, you're tracing backwards. Yeah. You want a piece to fall so it pushes them forward None of, them, none of them would fall because they all depend on the first one, right? On the one preceding yeah. them. You're trying to find an one. You're trying to find that moment at which that domino fell. Yes. And if you've got ten million, you're going to be constantly going back to. Well, if when you have ten million, yeah. then there's a starting point. Yeah. But there's an indefinite regression. Mm. Then the last piece will never fall. Yeah. The first piece, I meant, the first piece mm. that is in front of us will never fall because if you stop at 10 million, if you stop at 100 billion, and if you're waiting for that one, you're examining it, you're trying for it to fall, it will never fall because there's, there's more behind yeah, it. Yeah. And there's more behind it, and there's more behind it. That's what indefinite regression is. When you regress back in events that are linked, and if you don't have a starting point, it will, it will have no end. Yeah. And if our world, 2018, was the first piece in front of you, the world would not have existed. That's what indefinite there regression would have, there is. There would have never been that trigger. There has to be that first trigger. Exactly. Yeah. And since there is a world around us, there's this earth, this galaxy, this universe, we can see it. That means that, that makes it necessary, logically necessary, that this particular chain of events, our world, mm. chain of effects, must have had a starting point. Yeah, inshallah. Doesn't take a genius, it takes very simple analysis. Mm. If I may share with you how the writer of the God Delusion got it completely wrong, in all in order for him to doubt this logical principle, this logical statement, he used the example of cutting uh, a piece of gold. Right. And he said, if you cut the piece of gold into two halves, then you cut that into two halves, quarters, mm. and then you keep cutting each piece smaller and smaller and smaller. And you continue. Eventually you get to a very small piece, but if you have a sharper knife, you can keep cutting, even cut the smallest particle, the atom, the subatomic, and you keep going, you can keep going indefinitely. Right. That was his argument against indefinite regression. Okay. And I hope, Sister Rebecca, you can realize how wrong he got it. Yeah, because he's not talking about regression. He's, exactly. Yeah. He's not talking about regression. He's talking about moving forward. Mm. He had a starting point and a never-ending process of cutting, which we don't have a problem with. Yeah. Keep cutting as much as you want. <laughs> but there was a starting point. He used this example to contradict or try to disprove a logical principle. So you could be a famous professor 
Yeah. You could be an old person. You could claim to be a lecturer, an expert in this, and you get it completely wrong. Right, yes. So Very interesting. Indefinite regression is false. It cannot produce an event. So our world, which is a chain of linked events, each depending on the event preceding it, must have had a starting point. Mm -hmm. That was the first conclusion using very two basic principles. Causality, for every effect there's a cause, there must have been a cause, and the chain of events must have had a starting point because infinite regression of events backwards, I yeah. hope we've established that, yeah. is false. It cannot produce an event. Thank you very much for, for very um, incisive uh, analysis of that, which I think, inshallah, you know, will be uh, of great interest to our viewers who are, especially these days, searching for those rational arguments for the existence of a creator. Mm -hmm.